hello and you can see these gorgeous kind of robin inspired and folk art inspired birds here that we're going to create now you can see our list of supplies i use a couple of browns a kind of cooler brown and a warmer brown and a really good one that's in most kind of paint palettes would be something like a sepia and a van dyke brown but you can mix yourself a warm brown and a cool brown i use an ultramarine blue an orangey kind of red and then some green for the foliage so we need to mix up those kind of browns you can see here this is the cool brown and i'm adding that cool brown and some water and I am mixing that into kind of the paint palette there and getting myself a nice kind of mix of it. I also kind of grab a couple of my browns that I know granulate and make some fun patterns. And then I'm going to mix myself up a warmer kind of brown that I can use. So I've got those there um, and I'm kind of getting into the nooks and crannies of my palette and using up any bits of kind of greens and reds that might be lurking in there too this you can see here is the warm brown so so far i've got the cool brown in the big palette the warm brown that i'm mixing i'm just grabbing a little bit of ultramarine blue although it looks a little bit green there it is ultramarine blue and then the little pan the little gap at the top on the right is just a brown that kind of granulates a little bit but it's another cool brown i'm also wetting the red and this is kind of a red red it's windsor red and then I am grabbing a kind of more orangey red to pop into that second palette. Something kind of like a scarlet lake or even pyrrole orange would work really nicely. So I'm mixing myself a little bit of a, a more orangey red because actually robins have quite an orangey red to them. And once I've got those mixed, I am ready to begin. Also want to have handy your table salt and your piece of kitchen roll to kind of dry off your brush because you don't want your brush to be too wet. So if you're adding your paint too wet to the page, the salt doesn't work so well. So I'm just getting those things organised and I am taking the lid off my salt so I'm really ready. And I'm picking up some of that nice cool kind of brown but not too much on my brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the outline of the basic bird shape. Now this is a shape uh, that I use in my folk art bird class. If you've taken that one, you will know this one well as one of the basic shapes we use. We also use lots of other shapes that you could probably use and adapt to create some really funky styled robins. Uh, and a little bit of wet in wet, that's some of the warm brown going on kind of along the top. And then you are adding a little bit of the ultramarine blue kind of where you'd get shadows and along the bottom but not so it's going to get too close to the red and then you are dripping in some red now this bird is quite wet if you can get it not quite as wet as this that will work you want some quite intense colors and you want the intense colors because the salt is going to suck those colors up and it's going to make them dry even paler so watercolors always dry a little bit paler than when they're wet but the salt will take out pigment and so it will dry even more pale i'm going to show you another one of those birds and you can see that process again so with the cooler brown we're drawing that kind of really simple kind of head and a curved pointy tail and then we can add on a bit more of a tail shape to that and then we fill it all in in that cool brown color once we've filled it in and we've got a fairly watery mix because we're using kind of a wet in wet technique here we add a little bit of warm brown to kind of the head and along the top and it's just to give a little bit of variety and some interesting patterns and colors now i've popped the red on first this time and then i'm going to go back in and I'm going to add some blue kind of along the, the tail and the kind of underneath. Just some little touches. You can see it there and it kind of mixes with the brown. You get kind of a grey forming. Now you can see that's very wet. So I've actually dried my brush off on kitchen roll and I've picked up some of that watery paint. And you can see it's actually so wet that it's just gone back in and filled the gap for me. I'm just adding a little bit more blue. That's quite intense. So again, uh, 
a brush that's been dried off on kitchen roll to just suck it up and then a little bit of salt on the top to create some interesting patterns and we simply repeat that over the whole of the page with the birds going in kind of slightly different directions I tend to keep them all fairly upright on the page so the legs are all kind of going in the same direction but facing in different directions and always put the salt on after I've painted them. It's a good way to actually have a play and see how the salt plays with some different colours that you've got. And to see if you like the effect when the salt goes on when the paint's very wet, just a little bit wet. And what kind of different effects you get with the different paints. Now you can see I've got some of the birds have got some much uh, bigger tails. You see that I was just fixing a head, the red had kind of spread up really far into the head and so I just lifted it off again using that kind of dry brush to lift it off and then just to correct it a little bit if I need to add a little bit of the brown in. Deciding where these can go and leaving enough room for the tails was actually quite challenging for me I found as I was doing it. I'm actually using quite a big round brush here it's a probably an eight Round, which is quite a big brush it's just a brush I really like and I don't have it in any smaller sizes so you use whatever you're comfortable with and see we're starting to get to the stage where the page is fairly full now one of the things we need to do and I've switched and got a totally different um, warm brown there somehow I'm not quite sure I think I probably mixed it because I've had some red or orange on my brush one of the things we need to kind of make sure of is that we have some birds that are going off the edge of the page a little bit and you can see I do one of those here so the bottom of the bird is definitely off the edge of the page there and we can still see the red breast popping that on and some salt and then kind of over there I can get a little head I can get another little part of a head um, and I'm kind of doing those the little bits that you'll be able to see and then adding a little bit of salt to them and these kind of little bits that you could see like that they just make it come together and kind of define almost the edge so we're going to let that dry completely I normally leave this overnight uh, I don't like using a heat gun because the patterns aren't as good for me and we scrape off all of the salt and it's important to get off all of the salt if we're going to be using fine liner pens on it because it can ruin the end of your fine liner and also the salt kind of makes the ink spread in weird directions so the next thing we're going to do is add on some beaks and some eyes. Now the fine liner I'm using is a 0.1 and it's a Statler fine liner and as long as it's dried really well and I've given it a blast with a heat gun it doesn't kind of run if it gets wet. It's fairly waterproof once it's properly dry. So I'm popping the eyes and I'm popping the beaks on all over. I'm not popping the legs on at this point because for me on this particular page when I did it this particular version, the red on the breasts, on the chest, wasn't red enough. So I actually wanted to go in and intensify it. So I'm going to show you how you can go in and do that. And we're going to use a technique called glazing. And basically, we are sitting the paint on top and trying not to disturb the underneath layer. I've got quite an intense patch of red. Now, I've done four at once here. I'd suggest doing them one at a time. In fact, I've got five at once maybe even six or seven now the reason I've got so many at once is because when I put my paint on it was quite wet and I am quite an impatient painter but I now have to work fast enough that these don't dry because otherwise I'm going to really disturb the paint underneath now I'm using a damp brush and I am wetting it moving the paint around a little bit washing it off drying it sometimes a little bit on paper towel or adding a little bit extra water depending on what it needs and then softening that edge to add some more red so you can see i've used some water to get that to move wash my brush off dried it on a paper towel a little bit so it's just not drippy so that i'm getting a more intense red but that it blends so i don't end up with just like a red stripe it can take a little bit of practice but as long as you're gentle with your paper and you take care it will work and it will you know add that pop of red that we need you can see here they've got those so it's all dried and I'm ready to add the legs now the way I do the legs is I draw and fill in two really small little teeny weeny triangles 
as you can see here and then I just draw some straight lines down and I love the way it looks like the birds are all balancing on each other so you've got like this weird gymnastic bird pyramid I don't do any feet the legs just disappear off the page or disappear into the back of another bird and I just repeat that for every bird so they've all got some legs you can of course do this using any kind of pen that you like that works for you you can also do it in pencil a mechanical pencil would work really well to give you these kind of fine lines and so just going to check that I've got all of those legs in and we're ready to go on to adding some white highlights to the eyes I'm using a Posca pen here and it's simply a case of a little dot in the eye just so and you repeat that onto each of the birds so they each have a little white highlight in their eye just helps them to look I don't know a little bit more lifelike a little bit more alive add a little bit of sparkle to them when we've done that we're going to be ready to move on to our next step now our next step we're going to start adding some foliage so for this one we're going to add fir branches and we're going to use kind of a, a medium kind of a, a green we start with a curved line and then just diagonal lines coming off either side and we do these to fill the spaces any space that looks kind of a little bit big and like it needs something we can pop one of these in you can vary the green or you can stick with the same green it's totally up to you uh, have some that go off the page some that don't have them going in different directions and really just use them to fill in the kind of spaces that your eye is drawn to that look like they need something adds a lovely bit of texture and this repetitive kind of same mark is really quite mindful in the same way that with the wet and wet steps that we've done before this we can kind of really observe and see what happens and let go of any kind of expectations and judgments in this bit I find I can really be quite really enjoying this kind of mindful meditative quality that I get from doing these marks and putting the same branch all over which I really do quite enjoy and you can see we've nearly got all of the gaps kind of with something in them and it's just a case of looking is there a little one that I can pop in anywhere is there anywhere that still looks like it's got a big enough space and for these lovely little robins we're going to add some pops of red as our next step but this time when we're adding those pops of red they're actually going to be little red hearts now i use my spotter brush and it's a number one spotter i think and you kind of pull and make a v but pressing down a little bit on the brush and you can see you can get by altering the angle a little heart shape it's worth having a practice of that on a kind of little scrappy piece of paper so that you get the hang of it and then pop lovely little hearts anywhere where there's a gap that draws your eye it adds a nice little pop of colour and kind of really draws together the red that's on the robins and the red that's on the background and it fills in any of those little gaps that aren't big enough for a fir leaf but are for a heart and there we have it our finished page of folk art inspired robins you could go further and add patterns to them if you wanted to and you could have fun glazing wings on them but I really like them just as they are like this and I just want to invite you to think of one thing that you are grateful for today and it, if it's a tough day you can simply be grateful for having the space to feel your feelings or for allowing yourself to not have to feel grateful I would like to say thank you for joining me. I am very grateful for your company and your support and I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon.